Hello everybody, it's a City Mad Haven here today, and with me I have Blade, and today um, we're going to be focusing a little bit on statistic-based buffing and, well, why we think it's flawed. Um, along with that, uh, Blade, do you have any Hi, opinions? Everybody. Yeah, hello. Do you have any opinion on the um, new commander system? The new commander system? So, like... <sighs> Have you tried it to where you can uh, freely transfer your crews now by just skill swap rather than actually transferring the crew nation? No, I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, you can do but, it. You can do a that, skill share, so skill swap, and not pay any gold. Oh, well, that's cool. I'll have yeah. to check that out because I'm getting ready. I'm working on a crew right now that I'm going to be switching over to my, uh, no, my Japanese, I believe. And just do a skill swap. So you, you can leave your premium commanders inside of your XP grind tanks. And then whenever you had the crew where you want it to, you can just skill swap. And you you don't have to transfer any crews. It's f You don't pay any gold either. Really? I'm, well, shit. You're going to have to show me how to do that. Yeah. Well, yep. it's just you go into it. You select a premium commander. You know, I'll, I'd rather that we're, we're going to play the Badgers today as well. Uh, commanders. I'm going to go to my commanders. Uh, let's go ahead, take a look at, uh, let's say, for instance, the T-44-100. This is a Russian crew. Okay, so now it's swapping. Let's swap it with a American crew. No gold. Swap. So there, T-44-100 now has nine perks. Transferred it to an American crew, and it costed me silver rather than paying 60 gold a pop. So for anyone that's interested and not you know free to play players this would be the best way to do it and yeah so basically they brought value back to commanders um when beforehand these premium commanders there was no value in having them because once you maxed them out they were maxed out and there's nothing to be gained and originally i tried to push for them uh, making it to where premium commanders or hero commanders whatever they want to call them have a you know unlimited respects unlimited transfers where you don't pay gold but since they did it this way, uh, this way is actually way better because you can transfer and do whatever you really want. But respecking still costs 90 gold, which kind of hurts. But yeah, that, that, that is what it is. But later on, they're probably going to be jumping that down to 10 gold per perk, which I really want to see. All right. So uh, talking about statistic based buffing, um, we had Slap a Fish playing with us pretty much all morning. And uh, we were talking to him. Cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. We were talking to him about a couple of things, and he <clears> mentioned <throat> that they buffed the DW2 a while back, and that its win rate actually got worse. And, but they buffed it. It wasn't a debuff. They actually buffed the tank itself. So, statistic-based buffing. If you release a new tank in the game, who are the first people to actually get the Tier 10? Who are the first people that are going to be able to tell you this tank is performing good? Um... Your the, super unicorns. Yeah, the super unis. The top players who want to three mark every single tank in the game. Uh, the people who are extremely competitive. Who I just clicked a button. Uh, don't judge that. Um, I should stop waving my hands around and tapping things. But um, those players are You're the so ones. Funny. Yeah, I, I hit the plus <laughs> sign on my keyboard and heard a da dung. So, um, but uh, statistic based Buff. buffing. That rather than just purely statistics, it should be based upon player feedback as well. So, the Rosarante, um, compared to like the E100 now, Rosarante is it, it's literally a six second longer reload on its fastest shell compared to the E100 with its small gun. E100 is clearly gonna just mow over the Rosarante. Um, but the Rosarante in the right scenarios, like I showed off earlier today, playing with Blade and Slapper Fish, I had a 7,000 damage match inside of it. In the right scenario, it can be good. But the thing is, that scenario, like, Blade, how in our favor was that scenario? That was, I mean, it was, it was beautiful, I thought. It was, it, it was a three versus really seven, but the fact is, we it had could. the faster fire rates in the front, me stuck in the back, and... It, it's just, you know, it's like we also, really specific. We also had good position. Yeah. I wasn't where I wanted to be. I was about 40, 50 meters away from where I really wanted to be, but 
where I was, it was fine. Now, statistic-based buffing and statistic-based debuffing, it's just, whenever you look at a tank, if they were to buff the reload of the Rosarante, its statistics would actually stabilize. So, rather than its win rate going up, its win rate would go up for the first week, and then after the first week, it would start to go down again. Uh, the reason for this is because the super unis are not the only people playing that tank now. The average player is going to see, oh look, it, it, it got a huge buff. It's time for us to get on and start playing that tank. You know, it's actually worth the grind now, which is something that... Um, I don't know any other games that really do statistic-based buffing other than uh, Call of Duty. And honestly, their statistic-based buffing is like redoing accuracy, redoing rate of fires, redoing a ton of other things. It's just... It really, Call of Duty has fallen downhill in my opinion. And it's not really worth playing COD anymore. Then again, whenever it comes down to like first-person competitive shooters, I don't think me and Blake will ever really jump into one. Now, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, just it, it's too much, too much time. And I, then, got, I got, I yeah. got Gears Five. I just got to work on. I'll see. I'll play it. I'll play it sometime this week. Horde mode. If I can. Horde mode see in if Gears I can Five. Play it go. without falling apart, dying. Okay, but yeah. jump, jump it back on subject, Blake. Statistic-based buffing. The reasons why it's flawed is because if if I really wanted to, I could put a hundred matches in the E100 where I literally drive in, shoot one guy, and die. And speaking of Rosarante, there we go, 451 to the side of it, it stuck out in the open. Um, but then they're gonna look and see, like, okay, why is this guy not performing good? Why why is this uh why are the matches today inside this tank doing so bad? Well, you see, whenever you do an average, and you take an average, there's a really big problem about taking averages. Because if, if you're averaging 300, and then you have one random moment where it's suddenly zero, that average, like, out of 100, it actually drops down to, like, 199, 198. So, statistic-based buffing, because there's moments that we have just stuff fall right off. And then you'll find like an average zone. So rather than the 300 cap, you're seeing the average in the range of, uh, let's say, like 170. And that's like a consistent rating of 170. But then someone else decides to go absolutely crazy and just drop off the face of the earth and die all the time. Then it, it, it drops tremendously. You know, because if, if you, um, let's say, like a thousand rounds inside of something, and then you do a hundred of those rounds where you do absolutely nothing, yeah, you're going to see a massive drop-off. Uh, I'm actually a little bit distracted right now, Blade, just chatting. Front track, front track. Oh, it's auto-locked. Why is it auto-locked? That's one thing I want to do with Blake. Um, did Yuki join? We're, we're recording right now. But you're down. Yeah. You're okay. Um, st Statistic-based buffing, though. Blade, <laughs> if you're hosting the party, can you lock it? I think you might be host. What? Oh. Do I need to... Uh... Yeah, who's host? Because I don't know. I don't know. Do I need to lock the... Just lots of brain farts. Yeah, just statistic-based okay. buffing. It, it's really difficult to look at. Because Rosarante, then... its statistics right now are super high up. You know, and the reason why is because the only people who have played it are the super unis, and they're the only people that still consistently play it. So, looking at it from that point of view, you know, it, it's like it, it will never get a rebalance or a buff until like a year after it's been released once you know, the regular players start to actually grind it out, if they ever even consider grinding it out, knowing how bad the tank actually is. Because it's not a good tank at all. Um, its DPM is just horrible. That last shell takes 15 seconds to load, while you have tanks like uh, the E100 that has a 9.3 second reload. You have the IS-7, which has a 9.8 second reload. You have the 277, which has like an 8 second reload. There's just way better tanks out there. But then people it are probably going to... let me invite. Sorry. It, it might be because I'm host. And I don't yeah. have access to the party on the uh, 
app here from Xbox because it's on PC. I don't know how to change it. But yeah, it's just statistic based buffing. It It's flawed in so many ways. It is. And why, is. And, and why buff a take to the way somebody plays it? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, like so with what they, they did to the bison. Way, so we're going to buff it. Like what I they know. did. Yeah, talking about that. Like the bison, for instance, they increased the hit points and then they increased <laughs> the frontal armor of the tank, which makes no sense why they would do that because. Oh, wait till I get to the bison. I have too many tanks in my grudge. But looking at the bison, um, the part that made me laugh was is that they buffed the back panel right there to uh, 180, I believe it was. 160 to 160. But the thing is, there's still 60 millimeter hatches in front of it. So what is buffing this uh, 160 plate behind it when most tier 8s are just going to be the... Like, it, that's rounded off. It's very round. You just aim for the flattest part and you're going to pin. It makes no sense why you would buff that to 160 because people are using this more as a close quarter support tank. Like, to me, that makes no sense as well. Because if, if you're buffing tanks according to how players are playing them, then how are you... Like, the E4, for instance, uh, that buff was way too much. And, you know, I don't really know if we can... Be right back. Yeah, actually, yeah, we can compare the E4 statistically. Because me, personally, if I see an E4, I normally don't shoot at it. Um, Yuki, how often do you shoot the turret of the E4? Or do you normally hold your shells to focus on something else? I never shoot at it. Yeah, you wait until you have like a side shot or you got a view of the lower plate, right? Yeah. Which means that, you know, they're seeing its survivability go up or it's staying the same. Uh, they see its win rate kind of popping up a tad bit or the amount of damage it's taking, everything else. It's just... Whenever you buff tanks like that, it's... Yeah, no one is shooting it. And that's why you don't see its bounce rate increasing, because no one is shooting it. People are trying to guarantee their penetrations, because the other day they were looking at buffing it again, and the super testers were all like, no, 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 that thing's already ridiculous. The reason why it's dying more is because people are actually trying to counter it now, and if you buff it again, you're just going to make it ridiculous. Like, because, yeah, that's all it is. Like, the 268 version 5, for instance... Well, um, people know that it's been buffed and they just automatically throw in the heat. Yeah, throw in the heat rounds. It's the same thing about like the uh, Type 5. Type 5 and E100 right now. Um, yep. The first thing you do whenever you see a Type 5, you you can't pin that thing with standards unless you're a TD. So you got to throw in the premium. You know, you got to throw in the premium APCR, premium heat rounds and make sure those shells go through. Um, same thing and about even, the E100 then, right now. Sometimes half of them will, will ricochet. Yeah, like the E4, you've got to aim in such specific places to be able to pin that right now that it's just, you know, you, you can aim on the inside of the armor, which is only 300. Um, I tested it out the other day. Yeah, there's multiple spots in the E4 that you can hit without much of an issue. So I'm actually going to go ahead and load up the E4, play a match inside of it. As I'm missing stuff, Russell Ronte, do a transfer. <laughs> But E E4, huh? Yeah, some E4. But um uh, oh, now I'm starting to sound like the emulator. Uh, <laughs> uh what the heck? What was the next one that I wanted to look at? That's a little bit up there. Whatever it comes down to um overperforming a tad bit with buffs. That was loud. Ow. What? What, what is that? Are you eating? No, I opened up my Pepsi. Ow! That popped my ears. <laughs> uh, yeah, not really planned out today. Um, I'll jump into uh, this further on to be able to uh, get it laid out better. But right now, I think that the uh, 113 or the Chinese, the Chinese, I don't think they need any buffs. If they buff those lines in the future, I, I feel like that would be the wrong thing to buff. Or Blade, like, right now, since they buffed the E100, the entire E100 line, 
Um, that line is fantastic right now. So yeah. anyone who gr- grinded those tanks out because you uh, looked up a few things about them and then they never got buffed. Yeah, right now, right. Um, those people are probably extremely happy that they grinded those tanks out because they are definitely right now in some of the top performing categories at this moment. Oh, and also the eight-year badge. Believe that. And so is then, that what you're on your eight-year badge? Yeah, yeah, I got it like I'm a month on. ago. And I just got my five-year badge. Yeah, so you played the slacker. Well, I mean, you've been playing it for three years before I started playing it. Yeah, but you're a slacker, haha. I'm just kidding. Um. Yeah, I don't really know what else to mention, but commander system with that new change, that, that's a pretty good change, but still, they, there's a few things that need to be worked out, like a little bit of the kinks. There's always going to be kinks, though. This is um, a competitive game. I, I would like to see uh, dual usage equipment, where we um, are able to swap out equipment without really needing to uh, get rid of it. So, like, if they bring back the, you know, demount style but without giving us back our um, silver I'd rather see it give us back um, a voucher because originally that's the entire reason why they got rid of equipment like that because people um, for instance clone guy a while back he did a video like oh I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna make so much money off of it because they're doing a discount on this so make it to where rather than getting back silver for using 10 gold to where we actually get back a voucher that way I'm not losing equipment all the time and I'm not losing um, 750,000 silver every single time I try to respec a tank and redo something. Because for me, that, that gets pricey really quick. And if you guys didn't notice, um, here on Fisherman's Bay, on this side of the spawn, I absolutely love doing this. Knocking down these trees and then pulling up behind them, they cannot spot you out at all. This has got to be a really good play. But if that 50B wants to help me, he's got to pull around. Or Blade, can you possibly uh, pull that corner to spot a few targets? By the way, turn down your TV. Pull what? The corner in front of me? No, the one behind you, because I can't spot out. Uh, be careful, though, because of that uh, SU-100. SU-101. Yeah, I see that. There we go. You want to be careful when you're pulling back. Why do I have high explosives? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Blade's having fun. Can you pull that corner? Or uh, do you not want to pull that corner? I'm working on it slowly, but slowly. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to get shot when I did it. You know what I mean? Okay. And then once you pull it, um... I should be able to help you out just in case anyone else is back there. I've been spotted. You got proxy spotted by the uh, 277. That's right around the corner. Yeah. But the E4 up in the front of the E4, um, you see those two little machine guns on the right, and then on the uh, right side you see the... Uh, Two prongs shooting the inside of those with 300 plus penetration. Uh, you should be able to go consistently through the front of the E4. Without much of a problem. Oh, I just dabbed into my uh, premium shells now. Shot my five standards. And 1996. I cannot believe how many times I darted into the ground. Damn you shot from the left. Go ahead and pop that repair kit. There we go, shell right through the front. Multiple shots. And 53-55. So 6,000 dealt, 1,200 ricocheted. And we had one shell go through the mantle right there. Shot a little bit too far left, you need at least 400 plus millimeters to pin that. But if you shoot inner, closer inside, you should be able to pin it without a problem. 
But yeah, I'd, I'd say statistically buffing tanks based upon how they're performing in the queues is not the right way to do that. Um, along with that, the super test, I've been hearing a couple of people getting banned by actually sharing their opinions. Um, that is not a really good way to have a super test going. Super testing, um, there should be views of everything. Blade, you're gonna get shot and left. Oh, 340. Wow. I was expecting a lot more than that. But, um, yeah, just statistic-based buffing, and then the fact that inside the super testing community, it's a complete cluster as of this moment with <coughs> the veterans getting out a ton of the new guys and everything else, and yeah, just kind of a really haywire community um, whenever you look at the uh, super test of, as of this moment. So, a couple of things that, that I'd like to be seeing getting changed, and Blade learning how to stop messing around everything and opening Pepsi and... <laughs> <laughs> Destroying my ears. It, yeah, I know you don't. I know you don't. I do. I do all the time. It's normally not that loud, so I don't know why all of a sudden it is. Well, it's because I have to boost the audio to make sure that we all come through equally. Oh. Yes. That's why it hurt. It hurt I'll, me. I'll try to hold. I'll try to hold <laughs> it farther. I'll try to hold it farther away. Uh, or just click that mute button, like Yuki hitting mute. Uh, Yuki has that like uh, mute that whenever Yuki hits the mute, you, you hear the click, you hear the bass pop, <laughs> you know, all the time. So it's like, Yuki, your best bet would just be like, turn off the console, leave the party. <laughs> yeah, but see, when I do that, you don't hear me when I go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then he's going to forget that he muted himself, too. I do that all the time. My, my mic has a yeah. big red light that it tells me, hey, you're muted. Because I cough or something, so I, I mute myself. Yeah. I don't want to be coughing in your ear, you know. Yep. Although it happens sometimes, but I don't mean to. Yep. And uh, also, uh, last but not least, this morning I got a text asking if I can go graveyard for a while. Uh, it's like less than a 12-hour notice, so I'm going to be uh, going graveyard. That's going to be a blast. So, after this, I'm going to be passing out. Uh, Blade, however, today was a good day. It was a good day. It yeah, was a good day. Surprisingly enough, a really good day. Um, Actually. A couple of 8K wanna... games, which honestly was really cool to see. And uh, I'm going to be bringing everyone know. with me over to uh, Watch Stars real fast to take a look at how our play session went today. Uh, we've been at it for... How long have we been going? Uh, since like what 10 30 something like that yeah um we put in a total of uh 24 matches 20. yep yeah the e4 six thousand dealt and then uh 268 i've been actually having a blast inside this tank i had a couple of 8ks inside that tank today which dude 268 like you guys that thing holy crap that thing reloads fast um don't let it fool you but the rasarante that 9,000 rating that you see there was that one match that I did my 7,000 in. And uh, that was the only scenario that I was really able to see this thing performing good. And it's they are very far and in between whenever it comes down to it. So, yeah. There, I even brought my survival. That. My survival rate today was at like 24% at one point. I got it back up to 33%. <laughs> back up to 33 yeah, I mean, just for today. 33.48? I mean, yep. Well, actually, it says 33.33. Yesterday, you had a 52. Yeah. Oh, then again, you were playing yeah, a lot I of did. heavies yesterday. Yep, but I mean, I've been really working hard on trying to just be there at the end. Yeah, which is, which is something we all should do. You know, it's like, if you <coughs> can reserve your hit points for the end game, that that's... Some of I mean, the most look, devastating things that you can do. If you look at the tanks that I played, you know, I mean, yeah, I got a, I got my minus four. I didn't do where the shit with it. My Pajetto didn't have the greatest game, but I guarantee you every one of them games, I was in a position where at least I was slowing somebody down or something. You yeah. know, I mean, I got a lot of shots off, but I was doing something, you know, just so, I mean, to me, 
you know, I mean, how much damage you do doesn't always tell the story. You know what I mean? No. Um, like the, the fact that I sometimes pull up certain tanks to actually help Blade with trying out areas for team scraping. If you, if you guys have never seen team scraping, um, I guess I'm going to have to make a video on team scraping. But it, it's just we something should, fun to yeah. do. It's got to be on the right map. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, we've had some humilious matches that way. Oh, yeah. Uh, one, one of your platoon mates pulls out in front, side scraping or front scraping, and then you side scrape off them, front scraping, and then uh, they raise their gun blocking your hatches, so the only thing that they can really shoot at on the enemy team is your the thickest part of the turret. And, yeah, that it, it's something we're abusing right now because we can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But it's very situational. But whenever you do get in that situation, oh boy, is it broken. Oh yeah, you can just... I mean, because I can shoot right over the top of his tank. So, I mean, the only thing showing is my turret. So yeah, I, I guess like you said, coming in the future, um, I'm going to be trying to get those reviews out and start working on reviews again and getting things uh, done the way I should be getting them done and just trying to get back on track with YouTube and everything else. But with... Uh, working rotating shifts and just uh, I think the best way to put it is losing interest would you say that blade just losing interest yep took a break yeah, for I a mean, little bit coming back and I tell you what I, I got COVID and that took me out for a couple of weeks and then when I came back I just really just couldn't get back into it it took me a while to get back into it I mean yeah, I've missed several I mean I, I virtually was almost gone a month Played, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I sent a message to your account asking, "Are you dead?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> because that's and, how long and, it was off. I mean, in the past thirty days, I've played two hundred twenty-one battles, and that ain't really a lot considering that when I used to play with you all the time, we did six to seven hundred battles a month. Yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah, I've been kind of doing other things just because I kind of got a little burnt. I have to admit it, got a little burnt. Yeah, compared to my normal, like, thousand a month I was putting in, I'm only putting in, like, may maybe 600 at most now, so. Which is still a lot. That's still a lot of games. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a lot of matches. Um, other than that, you go, you guys, um, you know, as I, I'm, I uh, took a little bit of melatonin to help me pass out tonight. Well, today, since it's the daytime, and I'm waiting for it to kick in. I'm, I'm going to try and get back on track with um, videos, everything else. I still need to do the K91 version 2 and the E75TS like I said I was going to. If there's any tanks that you guys want to see, um, so far I've given out three season passes, so those are already gone. And I got an abundance of gold. If there's a tank you guys want me to review immediately after those two leave it in the comments of this video and i'll let you know if i can get to it or not if i can't more than likely i'll outright just free xp to the tank buy the entire line um i kind of want to get on track to where every single sunday i do a little bit of a showcase for a tech tree or really just having a random day um community tab will be used for that for what days and then do a little bit of a voting pool and what you guys want to see and uh, equipments and perks, everything else. Twitch, I find to be really good to actually help out people just because you guys can ask me comments live. Um, I'm not a big fan of streaming on YouTube because I, YouTube to me is the place that I take time out to give you guys a lot of information within the course of, you know, 30 minute videos or 20 minute videos that's kind of planned out ahead of time. Um, Twitch is the place where it's like, I'm live. You can jump in, ask a few questions, ask to see a certain tank, um, have things put together. So other than that, um, YouTube, not a big fan of streaming on there. I'll do them every once in a while, but not consistently to the point where it's just flooded. Because that's the last thing I want to do is flood YouTube. I'd rather flood Twitch with live streams than YouTube. Just because every once in a while I have really bad internet that likes to just... My router turns off randomly, and then I have to swap over to Wi-Fi with like two seconds. But World Tank still kicks me out. So, yeah. With that, I, I'd say that that's it for today. Right on, man.
and blade um the headset's hardwired but the battery in it died so the anc turned off ah okay like literally just two minutes ago i heard it pop and i'm like oh it turned off it's dead <laughs> they're both dead charge it up baby oh yeah they're charge both dead I, I haven't charged his headset in like five months though it's been sitting in a mine, drawer mine like just 30 minutes ago said your headset is completely charged now so i just now got it unplugged a half hour ago nice <laughs> it's been plugged in all day so yeah um for the future everything coming up um i did apply to be a cc we'll see how that goes um speaking of which uh pain god should change his name to the emulator <laughs> that's funny yeah I, I'm, I'm sorry well, I, I gotta throw it out there i gotta find somewhere to put it in you know and one, one one day if he ever watches my videos and he sees this one he's like emulator you know <laughs> kind of like kind of like the uh the uh, is4 is the tank for dummies <laughs> you're welcome slap a fish tank for dummies yep yeah. Speaking of which, they give up a fish for promoting yeah. my channel, um, getting a couple and, of people out there. And at least I got to explain to him why. I yeah, said you got to explain it to him today. <laughs> so he he got think, real quiet once we said it was a tank for dummies, and then once we explained, he's like, "Oh, okay, it's just blade." <laughs> it was just me pulling out and being a dummy, but blocking nine thousand ninety damage and doing four thousand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, we didn't win that match, but hey, at least we tried. Also, for we did, everyone... We on, did win that match. We did win that match. We did. For we everyone did. who doesn't know, um, I did have to get a new mic because the last one was having a static effect on it and pulsating. This thing is freaking gigantic, but it's compatible with everything, so I don't have the little ghetto, jerry-rigged pin connector with the weight on top of it anymore. So this is actually... Not going to say it. Don't you dare. It. Um, it's actually a lot better than what it was a little while ago and i'm enjoying it so let me know how the sound quality was this uh sound quality was this video as well other than yeah, that I have you to guys listen to this later on today yeah well i mean that's only if you won't really want to uh more than likely i'm gonna wake up and watch it myself so uh, and uh, double check audio you need to go to bed and I'll talk to you in the morning. Indeed. Everyone else, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for um, sitting back for, you know, 35 minutes hearing us monologue and complain. But that's that's normally how it goes anymore. Uh, I'm going to try and get back on track, though. Because I'm kind of feeling energetic about this since the E100 finally got buffed and all the tigers and stuff that I've been having a blast with for years are finally actually bouncing shells. So... Yeah. Other than that, you guys have a great day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is that you're catching this. Um, really not yep, worried about good likes. Night, everybody. Com like, I'm not worried about likes in this video at all. This is kind of just an update and talking... Ooh, gosh. Talking about statistic-based buffing. And, yeah. That's pretty much about it. Should have said it. At least you could have said was excuse me. I was trying excuse to you. play it off like it never happened. <laughs> not happening, man. Oh, hear. fine. Excuse me. <laughs> I am sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry that I get random hiccups out of nowhere. <laughs> and that... uh. Oh, that sounded like a burp. <laughs> that was a hiccup. That was oh. like a, a air bubble coming up because I'm talking and trying to breathe at the same time. You know, it's like... Because I can, I can breathe in and still have a conversation. Kind of a really like, bad habit to have. Yeah, I know. We've been working on it. Well, there's moments whenever you swallow <laughs> and you get that really bad pain in the back of your throat because it's like, oh, you know, just mm -hmm. woke up. Okay. Other than that, you guys have a great day. Uh, we should really have a good one, guys. Cut this one off. Indeed. It was nice. Blade, it's nice to have you yeah. back instead of uh, Corona, you I'm know. Back. <laughs> I'm back. Baby, it's I'm all back. good. And then there's Yuki. Yuki, you want to say bye? I, I thought it was over. That's why no. I spoke. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> Far from over. See, there's Yuki. <laughs>